This is the provider home screen where any providers or clinical staff would work from on a daily basis. At the top of the screen, we see the ability to manage columns. So each user can have the columns that are listed on the screen in their preferred order. There are multiple different options of things that you can add. You can also set a filter. So if you're a staff member working alongside multiple providers, you can choose which provider you're planning to follow that day. Within this screen, we have a row of icons here that are our patient forms that have been completed from the patient portal. Once a patient completes a form on the patient portal, it turns red. You can review that form and accept it into that patient's visit for the day and it will turn green. Anything that's yellow lets us know that there's no form associated to that patient that's been completed and they can fill those forms out on the portal, the app, as well as the pro check-in. You have this row of icon, which are our <clears throat> telemedicine visits. Any visit that's yellow lets you know that the meeting has been started or conducted. When a telemedicine visit starts, it will add a timer to this little icon to let you know how long the patients have been waiting. You'll also get a pop-up message letting you know that a patient has arrived and it automatically marks them arrived on this schedule. You have the patient's name, the reason for a visit, the visit status and the room number are intended to let you know where the patient is within the facility. These visit statuses are customizable, both the label on them as well as the color. You have your visit type here, which are your specific visits that you schedule at your practice. You get to choose exactly what that list contains. Your process status lets you know that there's something within that visit that's been ordered by the provider that needs to be completed by a staff member. So in this particular encounter, we have a lab and a consult that have been ordered and they haven't been sent or faxed or emailed or printed. So the system has assumed that there's something that still needs to be completed. On this particular encounter, there's a medication that needs to still be e-prescribed. So it will leave those process status information on there until you complete it and then it is blank once you complete that particular item. You also have an internal comment section that you can put notes on for the other staff members to see. When a form has been completed on the patient portal and it indicates that it's red over here in the top left, you can open up that form, see what the patient has completed, make sure they filled out all of the questions that you would like them to complete. These patient forms are customized for your particular practice. Once you've reviewed everything, you just accept that form and it completes the patient's face sheet with that particular information. To enter a patient's chart, you just click their name on the schedule screen. This will take you to the face sheet. The face sheet is a really powerful tool. It's very customizable. You can put up to 16 different cells on this screen and you can dictate what goes in here. So I have a few examples in this particular screen that are outside of the normal paperwork functionality. We have their medications, their allergies, the general information that you gather from a patient. We also have a personal notes section that you can utilize that isn't part of their chart, but it's more of an internal notes. Health maintenance is generally utilized for your annual things such as a pap smear or bone density test. Um, we also have the ability to put the vitals on this screen in a little grid format. So if you're tracking vitals over visit, you can see those here. You can also put other information such as lab results or radiology results into a grid and put it on this screen. So think of this as the place that you see a snapshot of everything that you want to see about that patient. And we customize that specifically for you. And each user can even move these things around and it doesn't affect the other users. You can have up to nine different face sheets. So some providers like to have the v previous visit progress note quickly able to pull up on the screen. So it just depends on what information you want to see when you come into the patient's chart, but we set that up for you and you're able to see that quickly. Another important part of the chart is the document list. This document list is searchable, so if you put in a term and even spell it wrong like I'm doing, it will search for any documents with the associated term, even something that's spelled similarly to that. So any document that is scanned and attached or created within Prognosis will go into this document list and is OCR scanned so that you can find that information by keyword later on. You can also utilize a filter button from within this screen and see all of your documents for a specific time frame. You can see all of your documents for multiple different categories of things, including diagnoses. 
You can also just hover over the word document list and find specific categories of documents quickly. So this gives you the ability to find historical information really fast. So from here, we're ready to start documenting our visit. So we have a few different options in terms of documentation. So if you prefer templates and you like to customize templates and make them really specific to your workflow and kind of tweak them as you go, we have a soap note method that takes you from screen to screen. You can use these little green arrows at the bottom if you would like to. So this is our complaint screen and you can have a list of all the different complaints that you might treat patients for. The nice part about this is it does drive your ICD coding. So you can have your ICD codes automatically add to your encounter as you select these options. There's also some supplemental ICD coding that you can put into each one. So if you need something more specific than this in that particular encounter, it narrows down the ICD codes that you would see. And I'll show you kind of when we get to that screen, but it basically makes it really easy to find your ICD codes by category based on what the patient's complaint is for that day. So you can utilize these templates. You can edit them really quickly. So for instance, in this one, if I have another option I want to add, I can just double click that element, open it up. Here are all my options. I can move those up or move those down. I can change the type of field. So a set of values is actually this. It's one choice. I can change it to multi-select, which would give me the ability to choose multiple. So we have lots of different options for the field types there. This is what goes into your progress note based on completing this element. So you can quickly and easily edit that information as well. Sometimes with template-based systems, things get a little wonky in terms of what actually filters into the progress note. So part of what we teach you how to do is edit this information, make sure your progress note says exactly what you want it to do so that when you put information in there for the next time it's saved in there for you and you can utilize that and document quickly behind each of these little binoculars there's also the ability to store information so these can be edited separately from the results here so you can store things that you're typing regularly in the remarks there and then each screen also has what we call phrases or macros where you can come in and check multiple items. It gives you the ability to put them in categories so that you can easily and quickly find them. So when you add a new one, you can assign whatever categories you'd like there. You can give it a quick title and then up to a thousand characters in this phrase section. So these binoculars are available pretty much in every screen. And in just a second, I'll show you our dictate and transcribe feature, which basically just combines all those note sections into one screen. So you can quickly get from section to section of the SOAP note if you prefer to do dictation. A couple of other nice features about this area in each of our templated screens is we have the ability to copy forward from previous visits. So if we've treated this patient previously, we can carry forward our documentation from those previous visits. We can easily see which ones they are because those will actually come over yellow and we can make changes for that particular visit. We can also have that information automatically carry over for you if you prefer and that's based on each section of the screen. A couple more screens of our template based section. Our physical examination is really nice because you can just document one check mark to make it all normal. And we actually have a little We have this little icon which allows you to see your progress note beside your documentation. So for instance, when I'm documenting my physical exam, I check this top checkbox to mark everything normal. Once that completes my physical exam here, I can go through and change anything that's abnormal. I also can have, again, things stored in these little binoculars over here. When I hit my save button, it then updates my progress notes. So I can see side by side with what I'm documenting exactly what's being put into the patient's progress note. The progress note can be customized for your practice with your name and logo. And then we also can control what content pulls into the progress note automatically and in what order. Our procedure section is where you would have any kind of standardized screening tools, things that you are utilizing that you may need to store and carry forward for future visits such as chronic care management. 
any kind of procedures that are being conducted, we have procedure templates which give you a narrative output. We also have the ability to capture the charge codes as well as the ICD codes for any procedures, including any J codes. So this is a procedure for a knee injection, not necessarily as relevant for your specific specialty, but this will basically give you an idea of any kind of procedures that you're performing, how that is structured. You basically give us a copy of what you want your narrative note to look like, let us know any fields that need to be created that need options. We set those up for you with the most common option at the top and then subsequent options underneath and so to fill out a procedure template you just check that box and then mark anything that's different for that particular visit once I save this it's going to add my ICD codes and my CPT codes directly to the encounter and then also adds this narrative note to my progress note and to the document list I can document a separate assessment and plan for each ICD code that I have saved in the system. We have educational materials saved from Medline Plus as well as Merck Manual. So each ICD code has a built-in educational material that you can save through the portal print email. You can launch the prescription screen from a couple of different areas. So within our assessment and plan screen, we have a launch here. You can also launch it from the left-hand menu over here on the side. Anything that you're not planning to utilize on this left-hand menu can be hidden. So if there are certain things, like we have a draw tool that gives you the ability to draw on a diagram of a patient. If you don't choose to use that feature, we can hide that for you. The prescription module saves items into a preferred list for you automatically based on your prescribing habits. So you can quickly come and find medications that you prescribe regularly. You can also click this past RX button and see things that you prescribed previously for the patient. Refill those quickly by just checking that plus RX. It populates it on this screen. The system does an automatic check of the patient's allergies, which are also listed down here. It compares the medications you're prescribing to their current medication list. So if there are any interactions, you will get a pop-up. If it's something that's serious, it will give you the ability to override uh, or make changes. The Schedule 2 medication e-prescribing gives you a quick pop-up like this. You sign it and you choose which of your authentication types. So we have a USB option and then also a, a phone uh, signature option. So you put in a subsequent password and it sends your prescription for you. A couple quick screenshots from an actual patient without their information on it, obviously. We do have real-time formulary and benefit information stored within the system, so you can see what the patient's copay and coinsurance is going to be for a particular medication. It will let you know if it's on formulary, and if not, it will suggest alternative medications for you. And you can see what the difference is between mail retail and 90 day at retail. You can also behind the little med history tab, see the patient's last 12 months of medication history. So you can see when they last filled medication, how long it was filled for, and whether you currently have that in your medication list or not. If you don't have it in the medication list, you can just check those options and hit okay. And it'll actually add those medications with the prescribing instructions and everything directly into the patient's current medications. Can save a lot of time on getting patients entered into the system when you first put them in there. Behind this little detail button is the name, address, and telephone number of both the prescribing provider as well as the pharmacy. So this integration with SureScripts really saves a ton of time, energy, and money. And you can also do electronic prior authorizations directly through the system as well. Last couple of little functions. So we do have an integrated order sheet. You can order labs, radiology, consults, and procedures all from one screen. We have order sets, which gives you the ability to order multiple tests at one time. So if you put these order sets in, you can check one button. It will order all of those items for you. When you order something, it puts it into a menu of open orders. So here, for instance, are all of our open lab orders within the system. So you can quickly track and see when things come back. When lab results come back to you, they go to this little bubble here at the top. Radiology results go there. You can actually go in and see a 
queue of your open lab. So I'm actually going to go order, look at some that I've reviewed before. Um, but your labs come to a list like this and you can see those lab results here. You can scroll through them. You can mark that you've reviewed them. You can actually add that lab result to today's progress note if it's applicable. You can assign a task to a staff member if you need someone to contact the patient or you can send it directly to the patient through the patient portal in a message and you can also create a follow-up lab order if necessary. So all of this can be done directly through this screen and when the lab results are in this screen they're also in the patient's document list so either place you want to review them they're in the same place and you can do both functions from both screens. It just matters whether you like a queue of things to review versus reviewing them as you see the patient. A couple of quick things to notate. So um, we do have a MACRA meaningful use dashboard that a lot of practices think are is helpful, which gives you the ability to monitor all of the different measures that you are reporting. We also have a pop up that you can receive at the end of each visit to give you either a green thumbs up or a red thumbs down, whether you completed the items you choose to attest for in that visit. And then we have this dashboard so you can see for a period of time how you're doing with each of those measures. We also have a reporting dashboard functionality in both the EMR as well as the billing side where you can have lots of different graphs and information. So the EMR typically is more related to looking for patient outcomes or statistical things such as appointments and that sort of thing. And then on the billing, it's a full billing dashboard with aging reports and lots of other things there. Each user in the system has an inbox, so that prescription refill that I had requested from Daisy Walker earlier, it's a matter of just opening, opening up that prescription refill, save it, confirm it's all okay, ERX. That's how quick it would be to send that prescription refill directly over. So we have system messages that will notify you of certain things, as I mentioned, on the portal. You can also send each other messages, send messages directly to the patients back and forth. We have the ability to send letters quickly. So at the end of your visit, if a referring doctor is listed in the patient's register, you can automatically send your progress note for the day in a pre-formatted letter. We also have a kind of faxing out screen. You can use this for faxing, sending encrypted emails, as well as just printing things. Uh, but you can have as many different kinds of uh, pre-formatted letters in here that can even pull things from the patient's chart. You can attach documents from the patient's chart. You can even filter this by date range or diagnosis code, so on and so forth. Any person who is listed in the patient's chart already, if they have contact information in the system, will have their email address, phone number, address, anything like that come over automatically. So once you have everything set the way you'd like, you just hit this little button to send the fax. If a fax does not go through, I'm going to get a notification immediately that my fax didn't go through since I put in a bogus number there. Um, so this also goes to the patient's document list. So every time you send something, it shows record of exactly what has been sent. So it goes in the document list as a letters out and you can hover over and see all the various different letters out and you can just double click those to go back into that screen to see exactly what was done and if it was received or not. We also have the ability to have incoming faxes come to a fax inbox. You can also scan documents directly into a box so your staff or you can review the document, decide how you want to file that in the patient's chart. I know one of the qualifications was needing to be able to customize the categories and you can do that. You can have subcategories under each of them as well so you can choose exactly how you want those documents to show up in your patient's document list. So as you attach things, you can choose where those go so that you're able to quickly find them within the document list. And you also have that keyword search, which is super helpful to find things quickly. A couple of quick little things I wanted to show because I know you talked a lot about wanting to be able to customize things on your own. So we have the settings and configuration area which gives you a lot of capability to set things up and really streamline them for your particular workflow. So one of the really nice things that we have is the ability to tie our complaints together so that you have specific complaints as well as uh, other items tied into each of those complaints. So I'm going 
So I'm going to open up one of the complaints and show you kind of how that piece of it works. So here I have abnormal pap smear. I can say what HPI template it's going to be associated with, so what kind of elements I want to fill out in the HPI section, what vitals template needs to be associated to that visit, what review systems, what physical. So based on adding this complaint, I can automate what things need to be completed within that patient's record. So instead of me picking from generic things, they're already there ready and waiting for me. Here is the ICD code that is going to automatically populate. I mentioned having optional ICD codes. So if there are other things that you want to populate within that screen so that you can choose from those quickly, you can add those optional ICD codes there. And then within your assessment screen, you will see those ICD codes under a specific category rather than having to search for them. Here you can type in information that you want to have automatically show in your assessment. And here you can have information that you want to have automatically show in your plan. So based on this particular condition, all of these things are going to happen for me. I can set these up one time and then the system behaves that way every single time. I can even automatically have a lab ordered based on a type of visit and some other things like that. So there's lots of ways to specifically customize the way the system behaves so that things are done for you ahead of time. Encounter types have a similar type of functionality so when you come into your encounter types and set those up you're able to default the duration of it the workflow which is the little green arrows and what order you want them to go in if you have a specific follow-up time frame on that you can have that appear automatically for you so you don't have to fill it out every time what type of claim it is whether that visit is part of your meaningful use, what color you want it on the schedule, how much it is. So if you're charging for telemedicine appointments and you want them to go ahead and pay up front, you can set a price for each type of visit, what type of progress note, what complaints go into it. So if you want to set up a encounter type for specific complaints, you can even have that complaint already attached and already in there for you. Same thing with procedures. And then on the encounter section, this is what controls what options are available on the left side of my table of contents. So all of that shows and then anything that's unchecked will be hidden. And then you can even set customized uh, text reminders. So if you want certain types of visits to get certain types of text reminders, additional information, then you can set that up to automatically happen there. Um, one last little thing that I did not talk about was lab interface. So as you order uh, labs, you can choose automatically for it to fill in the type of lab that you want to order from. So if you're always using a specific lab, that can be pre-populated for you or you can have multiple choices. Uh, we do have the ability to fax labs in addition to setting up the interface. Typically with the big ones like Quest and LabCorp, the lab will cover the cost of the interface. Hospital labs just kind of depends on your relationship with them and your volume of labs and things like that. But we have about 150 different lab interfaces that are already uh, pre-set up. So it's just a matter of connecting your database to your local lab. And I think that just about covers most everything. There was one last little note about not needing to populate HPI elements for billing support. So um, we have an ENM screen that gives you the ability to choose which ENM code is associated to that visit. We have all the different types of ENM codes. Uh, you can even say what code goes in each visit type automatically if you want to, but essentially now the uh, coding is down to the medical decision making and this gives you kind of a little worksheet based on what you did that day to fill out if you'd like. And then we also have the time factor. So if you need to put in notes about your activity summary, and again, we have a little binocular here where you can store notes that you type over and over again. So if you want to have this as kind of a backup to your uh, coding documentation, then that will be saved within the system when you check a box it adds that CPT code to the assessment screen so here I have my all my ICD codes and here I have all my CPT codes that have been added either from a procedure as well as my ENM code that I just added um, one thing I didn't show also within the ICD code, so similar to my medications, I have a preferred list that automatically loads for me for my ICD codes. Same with CPT codes, same with medications. So the system learns as you document, as you order things, as you build things. And then we also have some preferred things that you can set up manually, like preferred labs, preferred vendors that you are referring consults to. So you can preset a lot of those things so that you don't have such a big list to 
uh, pick from when you start utilizing the system. So I hope this demonstration was really helpful for you today. I'm going to send you the links to three videos, one scheduling, one for the clinical, and one for the patient portal. And I'll also send you a pricing proposal. I will be happy to do a follow-up demo if you want to deep dive into any of these areas. Uh, but please let me know if you have any questions, and I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, and have a good evening.